Hello everyone, welcome back to our unexpected party at Bill Bobagan's place. Uh, we are going to be making Melton Mowbray pork pies today. Now in the Hobbit they just mentioned pork pies so you can make any type you like, but I actually really wanted to focus on Melton Mowbray pork pies because they are such an iconic British food um, and I wanted to learn more about them. Now when I first made them, I didn't know enough and I assumed that, you know, it was just another pork pie and you could just whack them together. Wrong. There's like a whole list of things that make them very specifically melt and mowbray. So the first thing that is different is that they are formed um, to be self-standing. So their shape tends to bow out a bit in the middle uh, because there is no pie hoop or pan that you use to cook this. So in terms of the type of meat, they use fresh pork, um, while other porks might use more of a cured meat. Basically cured meat will keep it more of that pinkish color, but because it's fresh meat, once you cook it, it's going to turn to more of a gray color. When you are looking for the types of meat to use, um, they do recommend a pork shoulder, but also a pork belly can work as well. And the only reason is because it's actually to do with the meat to fat ratio you need one third fat to two thirds lean meat. I wanna talk about how particular this recipe is. Um, you are supposed to finely chop the pork. You are not supposed to mince it or grind it. Now, while there are flavors to the stock, when you're actually flavoring the pork itself to season it, um, the special ingredient is anchovy. So you do need that, and the only other thing for seasoning the pork is the salt and pepper. Okay, so the third thing is the jelly we need to talk about. So this is made from um, pork bone stock. We are gonna make it from scratch. Um, and the whole point of the jelly is three things. It's supposed to fill in all the gaps around the pork pieces, and the whole point is to keep it from spoiling quite so quickly because it's keeping the oxygen from reaching the pork. The second reason is it keeps the pie nice and moist. And then the third is that it also keeps the pie um, from crumbling and therefore falling apart. Because you know, it's like glue, it kind of just sticks it all together. So in terms of making the pastry, we are going to make a hot water crust pastry. Now, I wish I could have gone all traditional and gotten like they had these uh, wooden things um, to help shape the pastry. I, th that was a bit too far for me this time. But you will need to get your hands onto a beer bottle because that is going to help you shape your- And finally, um, Melton Mowbray pork pies are supposed to be served cold. If you don't, that jelly ends up reheating and turning to liquid and just becoming this whole mush. So there we go. That is um, me geeking out on food history and reading everything there is to know about Melton Mowbray pork pies. Now we can get on to making it. Okay, so we're gonna start by prepping our pork mixture. So if you have bought a, you're gonna need one and a half kilo pork shoulder with the bone. You remove that bone from the pork shoulder and you're gonna set that aside. Then you're gonna chop your pork into one centimeter cubes. You stir in one teaspoon of anchovy essence and season that with some salt and pepper. You're going to pop that in the fridge in an airtight container um, until you are ready to use that. Now we are going to make our bone jelly stock. So you're going to need a very large saucepan for this one. You are going to pop in your pork bones and you also need a trotter or a hawk. So the trotter are the pig feet and the hawk is the first joint. And the whole reason why you're using this is both are high in collagen, which when you cook that, that turns into gelatin. So either one of them can be used. Um, and basically it's just whichever one you can find easiest. So we're also gonna pop in one onion that has been peeled and roughly chopped, one large carrot that has been roughly chopped, one celery that has been roughly chopped, one bay leaf, two sprigs of thyme, a handful of parsley, a teaspoon of whole black peppercorns, three cloves, and three liters of cold water. You can pop this on the stove, cover the pot, and let that simmer on low for three to four hours. Um, I also did this by popping this in the oven at 140 degrees. I'll let that cook for nine hours. Um, the lid is on, but it's slightly ajar just to allow that liquid to start to reduce. Then you're going to strain that stock into a clean pot and simmer that down to 500 mils 
if it hasn't already. So you can let that cool, set that aside, pop it in the fridge um, because you won't need it until you're ready to pull this pie together. So to make the hot watercress pastry, in a saucepan, we are going to grab 450 grams of lard. So lard is rendered pork fat. Um, you are going to melt that. You're going to pour in one pint or it's 475 mils or about 500 mils of water. So you're gonna bring that to a boil, then pour in one and a half kilos of flour and mix that. Obviously a mixer is a whole lot easier, um, but you can use a wooden spoon until smooth and stiff. I will be careful, say, Please be very careful with your fingers. This is hot. You have used boiling water with this. Um, just don't burn your little paws. So at this point, I need to say, older recipes say to put this in a earthenware container. It's supposed to put a linen cloth over it and keep it near a fire. I don't have a fireplace, so this isn't gonna work. So what I do is I place um, with a clean dish towel over it and I just popped it into a warm space in my kitchen. I did pop that near the um, oven and that way and just had it on warm as well. So you are going to set that aside for about half an hour. Um, the dough is going to still be warm, but it's going to be cool enough to touch. Okay, so pulling it all together. Tear off a handful of the dough. You're going to roll that out into a circle so it's even thickness. If you are using a beer bottle, make sure you wash the outside and then you're going to grease and dust that with flour so the pastry doesn't stick. You're going to place your beer bottle at the center and then use your hands to roll the dough up. So a few tips, um, if your crust is breaking and crumbling, it's too cold or it's too dry. Either you need to warm it up first, um, you can do that by kneading with your warm hands. If it's still crumbling, you can add a little bit of warm water and knead that in. And if it's the other way, if it's too soft and not holding its form, it's too warm. So you're going to wrap that and chill that in the fridge for a few minutes before you try again. Now, once you've got that pie crust just right, you should be able to gently remove that bottle and it won't stick and the pastry will stand up on its own. You're going to press in your chopped pork mixture. Um, just remember you are not filling this with jelly just yet. You're going to tear off another piece of pastry and roll that to form a pastry lid. You're going to place that on top of the pork pie and pinch the edges together. At this point, you can also pop in a hole in the top. Um, this is going to be used later when you need to pour in the jelly once your pie is cooked. Now you're going to do this until all your pork pies are formed. You're going to pop that on a baking tray and you're going to pop that in the oven at 150 degrees Celsius or 300 degrees Celsius Fahrenheit for one and a half hours. Just before you remove them from the oven, this is the point you heat up your jellied stock because you want that to be back to liquid. So as the pies come out of the oven, you're going to use that funnel um, or if you have a measuring cup that has a nice spout to it that makes it easy to pour, you can use that to pour the stock into the pie holes until it is full. Then you're going to set that aside um, just on the counter, you can cover it if you need to, until they cool completely. And then you're going to pop that in the fridge to chill before you are ready to serve. Whew. Now that was time intensive. but so worth it. I love making traditional recipes from hand. Nothing beats making it from scratch. Anyways, that was our last recipe for our Hobbit Unexpected Party. I will do one final wrap up video for the Unexpected Party just to help you guys map out how you're going to pull this all together and where it fits um, in terms of recipe planning. So with that, I will see you in the next video.